I think that uh, the important thing is to begin to try to figure out how do we how do we get here? How how is it that in the stronghold of uh, Union stronghold of Michigan that we can end up with right to work? And people need to ask that question. I think people really know, need to know reassess uh, who we are as a union movement. Um, and I think that actions uh, like we're doing today, and by the way, we'll be back here tomorrow, uh, uh, is a way of saying that uh, as we reassess who we are, we're not going to sit back, we're going to come out and fight and educate the public. I think the public is really unaware of what does right to work actually mean, and I'm not sure that there are union households that don't understand what it actually means. And I think that we're losing some of our own membership to this mythology that somehow right to work will make things better or make our unions better, and it's just the opposite. Well, the first thing is we have to overcome the fear that people have and uh, the uh, media message and the corporate message that we should all be glad we have a job and it doesn't matter what kind of conditions those jobs are. And here we have a situation where corporates, corporate profits are up, but the plants are still suffering from deteriorating working conditions. Benefits are being slashed. Uh, one of the biggest problems right now is speed up and tremendous amounts of overtime. And what the companies want to do is avoid paying overtime. So they're now developing alternative work schedules so that nobody ever has a weekend off. And so they're constantly working. So we should be doing more with our lives than just working. It used to be, right, the, the, the labor movement would say the eight hour day, eight hour for sleep, and eight hour for leisure. And now that's no longer true. People are working 12 hours a day and commuting long distances because many of them, I called a woman yesterday, she lives in Saginaw. She drives to Lansing every day for her job and back. That's something like two and a half hours. Yeah. So you have that a lot because of the plants that have been closed. So we're talking about the inferior working conditions that people are suffering from. And the fact of the matter is that when you have speed up, people get hurt. And when they get hurt, of course, they go they go out on workman's compensation. But what we're finding out in places like Columbia, where they don't have a good system, is they're being fired. In our cases, when people come back to work, they find there are no jobs that they can do because they're all the tough jobs. It used to be that they had jobs for workers coming off workers' compensation. Those have all been outsourced at this point. The morale of the plant is horrible. Workers are upset. The quality will suffer. And the intended benefits of this schedule will not happen. So Marcioni might think that he could squeeze a little bit more production out of less pay for the workers, but it's not going to happen. And people have got to be aware of this. It's an attack on your weekend, too. The idea of an eight-hour day, the idea of holidays, the idea of co just compensation for workers, and we've got to stop it, and we are confronting it in the plan. A lot of them live at home still with mom and dad, and if if they don't live at home, they're not married and they're living with somebody else or, or splitting, you know, an apartment or whatever. And they're they're so much better off than their peers because there's so much unemployment in Michigan that they think they're in heaven. And I look at it and I'm like. You know, wait until you get married and you got a mortgage payment, a car payment, and you got kids, and you know you got to make your uh, co-pays on your medical and everything else. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, they don't have dental or optical, and they have a really poor uh, medical plan for the second tier people. We're hiring them in at half pay. Are we going to sit by while they sell out our children? We all have to come together, and I think that it has to be a collective effort, not just the leadership is 
uh, the membership as well as the ones who was elected to represent us. So if we can continue to educate the youth, because there's a lot of us who come in young that are replacing the uh, older and mature workers. They leave and they retire, but they leave us without knowledge. So if we can continue to educate and try to mobilize just not inside the plant, but also outside the plant, let people know what's going on, then I think we have to be heading in the right direction. I'm here in solidarity with Jorge Parra, who's on a hunger strike against General Motors' abuse of Colombian auto workers. And I'm here with the Committee to Beat Back Right to Work, which uh, was set up after Michigan passed the so-called Right to Work Bill. And a number of us from uh, different plants and retired groups are calling for the UAW and other unions to s take votes in every local for, the, for a general strike. Not to just initiate it, but just the discussion. The general strike is authorized by Article 50 of the UAW Constitution, which allows them to hold a referendum vote, and that's what we're urging. Let's, let's let Wall Street know that we have something else we can do besides go to the polls and vote, which is often fixed by big moneyed interests. We can vote at our plants and threaten to shut the whole state down. You can go to our website, beatbackrtw.org, download the leaflet and get it out in people's hands. People need to understand we have other tools, we have other ways to fight. And uh, they can get it out at the plant. I talked to one brother, he just read the leaflet at his UAW meeting. And actually the union officials tried to stop him, but the membership wanted to hear. So we really need a discussion. Work, labor hasn't been on a general strike for half a century or more. But that tool is still in our arsenal and we need to get it out there and popularize it. It really took the movement that created the CIO to get the Wagner Act and other laws and political measures that establish union rights in the first place. Now, the CIO didn't eliminate the AFL, but it built on it. It was a new union concept that made workers a lot stronger. What I mean by the new CIO is we need a qualitative uh, leap for the union movement that's just as big qualitatively as moving from the old craft unions to the industrial unions. That might involve, for example, a union local saying, everyone who is unemployed is invited to join this union local so we can have bigger marches and, uh, and win jobs so that we involve the unemployed. A union could come to town and say, we will represent all employees at fast food places in this city, whether they are members of our union or not, and they can see what kind of work we do representing them legally uh, and uh, with advice and assistance if they're fired, and see what kind of reputation that gives the unions. Great idea. That kind of uh, community involvement and support is the kind of thing that's necessary to make the union stronger and it's why the unions grew in the first place it's because the whole working population thought the unions represent us so we support them politically the flint sit-down strikers inside the buildings in flint would not have won if they did not have the support of workers outside uh, if they did not have members of the community, like the women who came down with two-by-fours to break open the windows and let the tear gas out of the plant. That was a community-wide effort. That was Flint, Michigan saying, we want a union, not just saying, auto workers saying, we want a union. And that kind of spirit is necessary to save and rebuild the unions on a much broader basis. If, uh, if we just say, uh, rally around this community and save union rights, the community wants to know what you're going to do for the jobs, uh, to, to, to have more jobs. And if the answer is, well, we're going to let your children be hired, but only at half pay, that's not the image that the union movement needs to beat back right to work. Against two tier.
and we're trying to organize there and get the two tier people together and the one first tier people together so that there isn't all this infighting because we don't all want to end up where the two tier people are. So that's what's going on where we're at. We're working like crazy, trucks are selling, so we're working six days a week. So we have to fight inside the plant while we're working. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. <laughs>